<laughs> Aloha everybody! Welcome to Live Yoga Channel. My name is Tara and this is Evan. We are live in our home. We've tried a new uh, camera angle, so welcome to our living room. Uh, we love to, we started doing these practices at the beginning of quarantine together uh, and practicing live on camera so that one, we could hold ourselves accountable as well as create virtual community. Um, there's so much happening in the world when we just roll out our mat, no matter what level you are. Roll out your mat, give it a try. It may look like advanced because we've been, tra we've been practicing for so many years. And it's my heart's desire to share yoga for everybody. So thank you so much. Let's get started. We'll find a comfortable seated position on your mat and you can be just comfortably easy easy cross-legged pose and I like to pull away the excess flesh from my sits bones and just close my eyes take my hands to the knees palms facing up tilt the chin down ever so slightly and just allow yourself to feel the breath coming in and out of the nostrils Notice where you might be holding on to some tension and as you inhale and exhale through the nose, allow with each exhalation for the body to soften. Giving yourself permission to be on your mat for the next hour, hour 10-ish minutes. Just let yourself be led through a gentle practice that improves body, mind, and spirit. It will change who we are from the beginning of practice to the end. So allowing that breath that's moving through the nostrils to expand. So inhale, lengthening in the spine, the body, feeling yourself just growing tall in this gentle, easy, seated position. And then as you exhale naturally, witnessing all of the bones, the muscles, everything coming back together and just like planting yourself back into the earth. Witness this reflection of the universe as we expand and contract with each breath. And utilizing this tool, our breath, to measure our output throughout the practice. I really would love for us to master the study of our breath. So when we find that we're constricted, maybe holding our face tight, that is indicative. It's telling us that to back off, to, to, to stop efforting so much in a pose. So I'll come back to that throughout our practice. And then we really want our face to be soft. We want to be able to smile in the pose. And when we do feel soft and the breath feels long and we feel confident to extend or try another modification, that's when we know it's time. So that's what this journey is about. It's finding and respecting yourself for how you're showing up on the mat today and how the body feels. It's giving love and compassion. So with that, take our breath. Go ahead and open our eyes, and next let's start Kapalabhati. So this is a forceful exhalation through the nostrils, a gentle, passive inhalation. It'll happen naturally, and then I want you to, as you forcefully exhale through the nose, at the same time, draw that belly button back towards the spine. So all face sideways, so you can see, and then you'll also see Evan. So inhale gently. Exhale, 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 exhale. Go on your own. Take the palms to the knees, shoulders to the ears, 
Hold the breath in, drop the chin towards the chest. Take the gaze as your eyes are closed. Look up at that space in between the eye eyebrows. Kumba, this is breath retention. So this is holding all that energy and that life force that we brought into our body. Feel it. Draw your perineum muscles up too, as if you're preventing yourself from using the restroom. And release when you need the breath. Take a long, slow inhalation through the nose. Exhale slowly. We'll do one more kumba. Take the hands to the knees. Inhale halfway. Hold the breath, drop the chin. Lift up the pelvic floor, pull the belly button back towards the spine. Your eyes are closed. You're looking up in between the eyebrow center. When you need the breath, gently release. Inhale, let the breath fill you. Exhale, let the breath come back to you. begin with yoga for the eyes. <laughs> We're gonna open the eyes. We're going to keep the head and, and neck straight, moving only the eyes. Open the eyes. Inhale. Exhale. Look down, look up. Look down, look up. Look down, look up. Center. Inhale again. Exhale. Look far right. Look far left. Look far right. Look far left. Look far right, look far left, center. Inhale, exhale, look down, look far right, look up, look far left, look down, center. Another breath in, exhale, look down, look far left, look up, look far right, look down, center. Chaka Khan. Let's extend the arm out in front of us. The elbow is straight and your pointer finger is up. First, let's just look at that, at your fingernail, and then let the gaze go past the fingernail. Bring the gaze back to the finger. As you inhale, gently bring the finger towards the nose. Do your best to not blink. Exhale, begin to straighten the arm again. Look past the finger. Bring your gaze back to the finger, inhale gently. Towards the nose. Exhale, back out. Trying not to blink. And then once extended, look past the finger. Last time, inhale. Bringing the hand towards the nose. Exhale, take that finger out straight. Look past the finger. Release the hands. We're gonna build some heat, building healthy eyes. We spend so much time in front of these screens these days. Give thanks for this opportunity. And we're going to build some heat and bring some ease to our eyes. So take one hand, cup it over your right eye, the other towards the left. Open the eyes and gaze into the darkness of the palms and do your best to keep from any light from coming into the hands. Healthy eyes. Purifying the rods, the cones, the retinas. Go ahead and release your hands. Shake it out. We've warmed up the, the eyes. We're going to warm up the hands next. <laughs> We're going to interlace the hands out behind or out in front of us. Extend those arms up overhead and stretch long. Keep your breath. Your head is centered. Keep your breath long and slow, gentle through the nostrils, soft on the face. Feel rooted into the mat and reach up towards the sky. Release the hands, back of the hands touch. Cross the right over the left, palms together. Draw them in towards the chest. And wherever you are today, just acknowledge it's okay. We are where we are, each of us, and you'll see, even Evan and I are in different places here. So try and draw the arms in and out as far as you're able to. Stay soft in the breath. Remember, back off if it's straight. 
straining. And one, release. We're going to switch sides. Take your time. It may be totally different on this side, and that's very okay. Thank you, Evan, for this new picture. I really like it. And release. Shake it out. We're going to come back onto our mat. Extend the legs out in front of us. Stick pose. Go ahead and take the excess flesh and let those sit bones really root into the earth. I like to bring my hands to my fingertips so that I have a long spine. My toes are straight up. We're going to start with toe cranks. So we're going we're gonna to bend the toes, just the toes, keeping the ankles on the ground. One release, two release, three release, four release, five release, six hold, and release. Let's cross the right leg over the left. Yoga for the toes. We're going to interlace our toes like we did the fingers. First one toe, then two toes, three toes, four toes, and five toes, and then squeeze. Don't use your hands, and just try the best you can. Maybe you get one toe, maybe you get two, maybe it's totally not available for you right now, and that's okay too, and you're just imagining, visualizing yourself doing it. This is great for our sciatic nerve, and release, we'll do the other side, Waking up all the toe, all the nerves in the toes, all the way up the legs to the hips. Thank you, body. Might be easier on this side or not. Just take a note. Staying soft with our breath. And release. Go yoga to the, for the ankles. We're going to move our feet forward and back. One release. Two release. Three release. Four, five, and six. Now circles with the ankles. First clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Opposite direction. Two, three, four, five, and six. Are we having fun yet? Going up to the knees, we're going to take our hands underneath. <laughs> Grab onto the elbows, it's getting warm quickly in here. <laughs> Sit tall in the spine, holding the knee towards the chest, and then we're going to make circles with our calves and our foot. Four, five, and six, opposite way. One, two, three, four, and six. Extend the legs, switch sides. One, two. Opposite way, two, three, four, five, and six. Extend the legs out in front. We're going to come up to the mat, bend the right knee, bring the right foot into the left thigh. Take that left ankle parallel to the left knee, or I'm sorry, the left hip. Walk back on your palms. Find out where you are today. Maybe it's just leaning back on your hands. Maybe it's on your forearms. Maybe you have the privilege to come all the way back onto your spine, or maybe you're feeling comfortable on the top of your head. Take your time. Know that it's totally okay where you are, and you should feel the stretch definitely in that left quad. If you're laying down, you can take the arms up overhead. Find what feels good for you. Part in the background, neighborhood sounds, except for the birds, I really like those. Inhale, we're going to come back, we're going to bring our hands by our hips, we're going to help our body upright, we're going to switch sides, honoring that it may be a totally different experience over here, as is the right and left sides of our body. There's a lot going on in this inner universe. It's morning here for us, so we're warming up slowly. It may be the middle of the day for you, and you're taking a break from work. Good job. You might feel more open or more tight. There's 
honoring where we are. Thank you, thank you, body. This time on our mat is all our own. Thank you. And as you're ready, we'll begin to come out of the pose, bring our hands back to the mat. We're going to find our way to a standing position. Evan's going to move. Camera. So we're coming to the front of our mat. Find your standing pose. Go ahead and close your eyes. Your feet are together. Find a sense of alignment so that you feel rooted into the earth. The back of the neck is long. The chin is tilted down ever so slightly. The crown of the head is open to the heavens. And with your eyes closed, I'd love for you to imagine the most beautiful sunrise or sunset you've been witness to lately. Summertime here in Honolulu. When we woke up this morning, there was a rainbow and a full moon as the sun was rising. We give thanks for the sun, the mighty star in the sky that gives all life to this planet. We pay our respects. We'll go through two slow, classical Surya Namaskars. Surya means sun, Namaskar means respect. Inhale, open the eyes, hands to prayer position. Exhale. Inhale, take the arms up overhead, look up. Exhale, fold forward, hinging at the waist. This is the first stretch of the day, don't overstretch. Let your head and neck hang, looking towards your knees or your shins. The backs of the legs are long, so maybe you can bring your hands to your shins, the backs of your ankles, maybe to your toes, wherever you are. Lengthen the breath and stay soft in the face. Perhaps you have the privilege to bring your hands to the ground. You might have the privilege to put your palms down on the earth and your fingers away. Feeling the hips go towards the ceiling. Bring the weight more into the balls of the feet so that the hips are stacked over the ankles. This should feel good. We're going to gently bend the knees. Bring our hands to either side of our toes. On an inhale, take that left leg back. Drop the knee. Inhale, open the heart. Draw the shoulders up and back. The hands are parallel to the hips. The gaze is looking up. There's no strain or stress in the head and neck. Right now, the top of the back foot is pressing powerfully into the earth, as is the knee, the right foot. And then you're using that that right knee to help balance and it's centered in the body. Looking up, staying soft in the face. Exhale, we're gonna take our hands back to either side of the front foot. Tuck the toes of the back foot, take the left foot back into our first as Westerners, we know this is downward facing dog. In our practice here this morning, we call this mountain pose. Our teacher is from the Himalayas, and they <laughs> call this mountain pose. So that's what we do too. So your heels are reaching towards the earth. You're lifting, you're pressing powerfully into the palms. You're lifting your hips up towards the sky. Again, we're early in the practice, just allowing the breath to move through the body. 
Press the heels down towards the earth. It's okay if they're not touching. Just you want your energy moving towards the mat. The knees are pressing back towards the wall evenly. You're pressing powerfully through your palms. Inhale. Exhale through the nose. Drop to the knees, chest and chin, ashtam pranam, eight limb pose. We got our toes, our knees, our chest, our chin, and our fingers. We're looking down the nose. Release the posture, bring the palms to the mat. Slither that chest through the shoulders. And for this first paw, for this first time through, I like to just come into Sphinx pose. It's, it's most helpful on my back. And so bring the forearms to the mat, draw, draw the shoulders up. You're gonna look up. It's a gentle back bend. The tops of the feet are flat on the mat. Your legs are long. Feel the alignment, have a smile on that face. Thank you, body. Exhale, release. We're gonna tuck the toes, draw the hands back underneath the shoulders, press into those palms, lift the hips, and come back into your mountain pose. Press the chest powerfully towards those thighs. Feel free, you're in your living room. It feels really good to let out a sigh, moan, or groan on the exhale. Inhale, take that left foot up in between the hands. Drop that right knee and the right foot. Inhale, roll those shoulders up and back. Equestrian pose on the opposite side, waking up the body, pressing powerfully into the earth with all grounded body parts. The left foot, the top of the right knee, top of the right foot, and then utilizing that left knee to center and strengthen your posture. For three, two, and one. Inhale, take the hands back to the mat, tuck the right toes, draw that right foot up to meet the left, forward fold. Should feel juicy, the body's starting to warm up here. Find the variation that works for you. Maybe you can take your hands to your ankles now. Maybe you can bring your hands to the earth. Exhale completely. As you inhale, take the arms together, up overhead. Look up, gentle back bend. We're gonna close the posture, coming through, prayer position hands to the side. We'll do this next side, moving through the breath. Inhale. Exhale, take the hands to prayer position at the heart. Inhale, take the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, hinging at the waist. Inhale, take that right foot back, drop the knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, the arms, the shoulders up and back. Take the gaze up. Exhale, take the hands back to either side of the front foot. Take the left foot back to meet the right. Drop to the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, slide on through to cobra. Keeping those elbows in tight, look up. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, press powerfully through the hands, coming back into your down dog. Mountain pose. Inhale, the right foot forward. Drop the back knee and the back foot. Inhale, the shoulders up. Look on up. Exhale, take the hands to either side of the front foot. Tuck the toes. Draw that left foot up to meet the right forward fold. This should feel good. Let everything hang. Inhale, the hands together, all the way up overhead, and back gently. Exhale, coming through prayer position. Release the hands. Close the eyes and just notice sensations swirling around your body. Perhaps your heartbeat is starting to pick up some. You might be feeling 
a little bit of sweat starting. We honor asana. Asana is the physical practice of yoga. And it supports our nine gates, our ears, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our anus and genitals, all the detox pathways. So this physical practice helps to harmonize every cell in our being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been bearing witness to a beautiful full moon the last several days. Maybe you've seen it. With your eyes closed here, I want you to remember what that beautiful full moon looks like the last time you've gazed at it from under, out from under. <laughs> last time you've seen a beautiful full moon. How you felt. I'm just honoring that as the moon impacts the, all the waters of the earth, it does inside of our, our earth as well. So we do Chandra Namaskar, pay respects to the moon, make our mind the best friend. Inhale. Exhale, open the eyes, bring the hands to prayer position at heart center. Inhale, the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, take the left foot back, drop the knee. This time, take the hands through heart position. I like to make a steeple at my heart and then take the arms up overhead. If the steeple is hard on your on your shoulders, there's no hard and fast rules. It's okay to have your arms parallel. But what we're going for here is more like a crescent moon position. So at the final pose, you're looking up and back without straining the lungs, without straining the neck. Soft in the face. And one, exhale, hands to the mat. Tuck the back toes. Take the right foot back to meet the left. Press those heels towards the earth. Press powerfully the chest towards those thighs. Pressing evenly through both palms. Inhale the left leg. In oh, right. <laughs> Exhale, drop the knees, chest, and chin. Cobra. Didn't we? Inhale to cobra. Exhale, drops. Oh, that button's the same thing on the other side. That's the first one. The left foot in between the hands, drop the knees and the top of the foot. Bring the hands up overhead. Press and pose on the other side. Exhale, we'll release our hands, tuck those back toes, bring the right foot up to meet the left, forward fold. Inhale, bring the hands together, all the way up overhead, gentle back bend, close the pose, exhale, hands bringing back through the heart and to the hips. Do one more with our breath. Inhale. Exhale. Hands to prayer position. Inhale. Take the arms up overhead. Look back. Exhale. Fold forward. Inhale. Take the right foot back. Drop the knee and the top of the foot. Bring the hands to prayer position. And then up overhead. Look up and back. Pressing powerfully in the top of the back foot, bottom of the front foot. Keep that left knee coming through the center. Exhale, release the hands. Tuck the back right toes. Take the left to meet the right. Drop to the knees, chest, and chin. Slide on through into cobra or up dog as you inhale. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, press back into mountain pose. Inhale, take that right foot up in between the hands, drop the knees, take the hands to steeple, up overhead, 
dropping that back knee. Exhale, release the hands to either side of that front foot. Tuck the toes, bring the left to meet the right. Forward fold. Just let everything hang here. You'll notice you might be able to stretch a little bit deeper here as the body's warming up. Give thanks. Thank you to your body. Inhale, the arms up all the way overhead. Exhale, close the pose. Release the hands. Go ahead and take a moment. Close your eyes. Pay attention to sensation swirling around your fingertips or your toes. Notice how your shoulders maybe feel a little bit more in alignment. Your hips are starting to even out. The body's waking up. As we bring our awareness to the heartbeat and how it's The heart is associated with the emotion of love, and as it beats, it's sending loving energy across all of the systems of our body. And we remember that when we practice yoga, we're practicing self-love. We're going to open our eyes and move into our first asana, our first posture for today. We're going to come into chair pose. So we're going to keep, bring our feet together, and with our knees together, we're just going to bend the knees, and bring the arms up overhead, as if you're, you know, bend the knees, sit down as if you're sitting into a chair. Your hands can be parallel, if that's best for your shoulders, or you can return to that steeple position that we were doing in the Chandra Namaskar. Bending down, you want your knees in alignment with your toes, squeezing the Activating the thighs, and then at the, go ahead and take your gaze towards the ceiling. So your your head's parallel into your into your shoulders, but you're looking up towards the sky. Staying soft in the face. The final breath, the final phase of the pose. Your breath is long and slow. Go ahead and lift your toes up off the mat, just the toes. Bring the weight into the balls of the feet. Sit down a little bit more. Two and one. Inhale and release. We're going to interlace the hands back behind us. We'll counter this. Open up the heart and then fold forward. And as is, you're available. Bring those arms up towards the ceiling. You can let your chin drop towards your chest. That can feel good too. Soft in the face, your breath is slow. Exhale completely, and on an inhale, we'll draw the chest back up, release the hands. We're going to come into twisted chair. First, we're going to work on bringing lots of loving energy and massage to the stomach area. So with the, the knees and the feet together, we'll bring our hands into prayer position. Inhale. Exhale, begin to take the left elbow on the outside of the right knee. You're going to twist from, from your elbow, from the low spine, and take your head and neck looking all the way up. Take a moment to glance to see that your head and neck are in alignment with your toes, and then sit, begin to sit down even further. Look all the way up towards the ceiling. Now you can stay here. Or you can take, you can take, keep the left elbow on the outside of the right knee and take that left palm to the earth. Take the right arm all the way up to the sky. Lift the heart up towards the sky. You can stay here. Or you can take that right hand to the outside of the left hip. And begin towards your bind. If you have a bind in your practice, please do so. Not me today. Inhale. All the way up. We'll release the pose. 
We'll do the same thing on the other side, bringing lots of loving energy to our liver. Inhale, hardest internal working organ in the body. Exhale, take the right elbow on the outside of your left knee. First, just twist. Let's get the twist. Sit the butt back, twisting from the tail all the way through the crown. Looking up to the sky, lift that left shoulder. And then from here, you can choose, if you'd like to take it further, take that right elbow on the outside of the left knee, take the hand to the earth, take the left arm up, reaching through those fingertips. Sit the butt down. You can stay here, or you can bend that elbow and take the back of the hand and press it into that right hip. Open up the heart a little bit more. Ringing up the spine, so good for the nervous system. From the tail to the crown. For three, two, and one. Come out with grace. I like to draw the arms up and back through prayer. Release. Shake it up. <laughs> We're gonna go through table. We've done chair. And so with your hand, your feet together, draw the arms up overhead. And again, if, if you want to keep them parallel, that's fine. And then hinge at the waist. Keep the ears parallel in between the arms and then reach those fingertips towards the front wall. So you've got a great 90 degree angle here, right? Your ears are parallel. You're looking down to the, to the earth just under your nose and you're reaching through the fingertips. You're pressing down through the feet and you're extending through your sit bones to the back of the wall. Your breath is long and slow. For five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the hands to prayer position. Bend those knees gently. We're gonna bring the weight into the left foot. We're gonna bring, we're gonna lift the right knee and the right leg back. Pressing powerfully through the heel towards the back wall. The toes are Pressing down, your hips are square to your shoulders. You can keep your hands here, or you can bring them, if you don't have a shoulder or neck injury or a back injury, you can bring your arms up overhead and reach towards the front of this room. Three, two, and one. Bring the hands to prayer. Come all the way back. We're going to go into tree pose. So just find your variation from here. Bring the right foot on the inside, whether it's the calf or the thigh, just not into the knee, please. And even if you need to just practice here. We practice balance poses because they bring balance to our lives, especially when the world is showing us crazy things. So arms up overhead and then do what you love. Let your tree sway. Shake it out when you're ready. We're going to come to the other side. So bending both knees, we're going to bend our right knee and let, uh, let the weight of the body find balance in the right foot. We're going to send that left leg back behind us. Our hips and shoulders are square. Our hands are in prayer position at the heart. This may be our pose. We also may take our arms back behind us. That feels good. It's in your practice today, extend those arms out in front and reach powerfully through the fingertips all the way down through the heel. Soft in the face, you're breathing. Bring the hands to prayer. And we're going to bring that left foot into the right thigh, finding your variation of tree. In balance poses, it's helpful to find a drishti or a, an unmoving 
spot on the wall or the floor in front of you where you can stare at. It helps, helps to find our balance, an unmoving part. It's a drishti or a gaze. Go ahead. Release it, shake it out. I like to shake it out. <laughs> shake it out. <laughs> oh, it's getting warm. What are we doing? Now? What's next? Swing tree, come to the ground. Where are we going? Yeah. Let's do swing tree. That's an important one. So take our feet, mat distance apart. We're going to reach both of our arms up, grab our left wrist, take our left hip out to the side, exaggerate it. Reach towards the opposite wall and then look on up towards the ceiling. Take that right armpit and bring it forward a little bit, what it feels like further than the left. Breath is steady. Inhale, come up. We'll switch sides. Send that right hip. Stretch that right arm, the right side body. Small sips of breath here help. Look on up. Inhale. Exhale, release. We'll bring our feet about five inches apart from one another. We're going to do a forward fold. So let's inhale the arms up, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, hinge at the waist. And then wherever you are is totally fine. Some of us are going to be on... You know, only able to fold forward and grabbing onto the backs of our knees feels best. Some are at our shins. Some can take the palms underneath of the feet. We can press on those palms. Wherever you are, find what works for you. the hips up towards the sky. Go ahead and release. And everybody, we're going to bend the knees some. We're going to take our, our first two fingers. We're going to grab onto our big toes. Even if we have to have our knees and our elbows bent, we're going to begin to straighten the arms, straighten the knees, and then look up towards the wall in front of us. If you need to have your knees bent, that's okay. But for those of us that don't, keep the knees straight. And then for each of us, it's where on that wall in front of us are we going to look? Can we look where the floor and the, and the wall come together? Can we look halfway up the wall? Can we look where the ceiling touches the top of the wall? Opening the upper back, release the posture. Bend the knees, we're going to roll up and out slowly. We're going to take our hands to the earth. We're going to come back into our take mountain pose. Take a breath and breath. Walk me through. <sighs> so let's spend some time here in this upside down V that looks like a mountain. Notice that one heel might want to come back towards the earth more than the other, try and press both heels down evenly. Notice that the backs of the knees, one may want to press towards the back wall more than the other. Press both knees back evenly. We want to roll our shoulders evenly so that the armpits are facing one another. Make the adjustments in your body. And then pressing down evenly through both palms, especially underneath this first finger. Press down powerfully. See if you can feel all four corners of your, of your palms as you press down. And then you let your head and neck hang like an avocado. On your next inhalation, we're going to lift that right leg. Left leg up towards the sky. Your hips and shoulders are square. You're pressing back through your heel. Your toes are pointed down. 
Exhale, bring that left foot up in between the hands. We're going to come into Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. The back toes are at like 2 o'clock. Inhale, the shoulders up. You're going to lean into that front foot. We're going to try for 90 degrees, yet based on where you are today, you make the adju that adjustment, right? Hips and shoulders are square. We're reaching. We're gripping the mat with the back of our foot, too, so our feet are activated. And then bring those arms up overhead. Perhaps they're parallel. Perhaps they're steeple. Lean into that front foot. And then the final pose. Draw the right shoulder slightly more forward than the left. And then take that gaze, that drishti, up towards the sky in between the eyebrow center. Smile on the face. Inhale. We're going to transition to warrior two. I need to move my back hip, my back right foot back a little bit. And so we're going to open up to the side. So my hips and shoulders are now square to the side wall. I look forward. My hands are even. They're pressing out into infinity on both sides. I can look back to make sure that I'm in alignment. And then sink down further into that front knee. Inhale. Exhale, bring that right arm forward, coming into Virabhadrasana. Fearless warrior, Avaya Virabhadrasana. Advaya <laughs> Virabhadrasana. And so keep from the, the belly collapsing on the thigh. Say good morning to that femur bone coming into the hip socket. That's what I said. And then again, your gaze is up to the ceiling through the arms and the eyebrows. And two and one. Release the left hand to the inside of that left foot. Open up the heart. Take those fingertips up towards the sky. You might want to wiggle your back right toes, your back foot back some so you can sink a little bit further. Stay here if this is your pose. If you have your bind, you can take that left arm underneath, take the right arm back behind, and find where your fingers, your wrists, or your hands connect. Open up the heart for three, two, and one. Release the hands, drop the knee, heel, toe, the foot off the mat. Kondinyasa, here we go. <laughs> hands, into, hands into push up position. I'm going to walk my right foot back so that I can bring my left elbow to my inner left thigh. I'm going to bring the weight of my body forward so I'm leaning and I can get my right elbow and hook it on my right hip. As I'm leaning forward, maybe I can lift my right knee, maybe I can lift my right foot, coming to balance on both my forearms. A is for attempt. Give it a try. One time, two times. When you're ready, come to rest in Balasana with your hips coming back towards your ankles. Put a pillow if you need. Let your forehead rest on the mat. Should feel good. One long, deep, slow inhalation. Exhale slowly through the mouth. And then let the breath return to normal. Take our introspection to our lungs, acknowledging how much we appreciate our vibrant, vital, beautiful lungs. As they take in breath, fresh oxygen, and they transmute it in the lower lobes, the middle lobes, and the upper lobes. They send that fresh oxygen, oxygen to the heart, or then the heart sends that fresh life to every cell through the arteries, veins, and ventricles. So grateful for these systems, these autonomic systems that just work for us every single day. While we're awake, 
while we're sleeping. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you're ready, we're going to meet back up into mountain pose. Inhaling the right leg up, keeping a parallel pressing back through the heel. Stretch long. Exhale, swing it on through. We'll take our left heel to the earth, take our left toes. I like about 10 o'clock. Find what works for you so that you can have your hips and your shoulders square facing forward. Bend into that front knee. Activate the feet so you're engaging. You're, it's as if you're efforting to grip the mat with the back of the left foot. Draw the arms up overhead. Gentle twist so you're bringing the left armpit more forward than the right. Final pose, you're looking up. Smile on the face. Inhale, we're going to open up and extend the arms forward and backward, coming into Virabhadrasana 2. I need to adjust my back left foot so that the arc of my back left foot is in alignment with the heel of my front foot. I look back to make sure that that's the case. And then I bend that front knee so I can sink a little bit further. Inhale, the left arm to meet the right. Avaya Virabhadrasana. Fearless warrior. Staying strong so that we keep from collapsing our belly onto the thigh. Stay strong. Two and one. Release. We're going to take that right hand on the inside of the right foot. Take the left arm up and reach to the sky. Full spinal twist here. This should feel good. Stay here. Or you can bend that left elbow. Take the right hand underneath the right thigh. Grab onto your fingertips. Find a line somewhere. But then open up that heart a little bit more. Sink in the hips. For three, two, and one. Release the hands. Bring the hands to the earth. Heel toe, heel toe, the right foot off the mat. Bring the hands just under the shoulders. Bend the elbows, walk that left foot back. Bring the right elbow into the right thigh. Bring the left elbow into the left hip. Lift the knee, bend the back toes. So you're making shelves with your forearms there. And as you master the pose, you can come up through center and then go through the other side. Show us how it's done. I've got the most handsome demo ever. <laughs> and then again, we're going to press back into child's pose. Maybe it feels good to have those knees wide and bring that chest in between the thighs, letting the forehead just rest. One long Slow, deep inhalation through the nostrils. Exhale slowly through the mouth. Bring the breath back to normal. your forehead on the mat. You might be seeing colors. Let's just bring some awareness and gratitude to our brain and our nervous system. All the fluids and the electrolytes and the, the levels. All of the incredible nuances that need to be just right for us to get to do and live so vibrantly. Giving thanks to our brain. 
our ability to think and see and observe and process and analyze. We're so grateful for these fascinating minds that allow us to question and consider as we move throughout our days and life. Giving thanks to the brain and the entire nervous system. As you're ready, we'll meet back in mountain pose. This time we'll take our left foot, we'll lift it up towards the sky, and we'll bend the knee, letting the hips stack. Look up underneath your left armpit up towards the ceiling. Should feel good. Inhale, begin to square off that left foot again. And then exhale, swing that knee towards the left wrist and the right ankle towards, or the left ankle towards the right wrist. We're going to find our pigeon, how it works. First, just coming up. I like to take my fingertips and put them on my, put them to the right of my hips. It's all about walking that right knee and ankle back so that your hips and shoulders are square, sink. That may be plenty right there. Find your breath, find your relaxation. If you can, go ahead and look up. And then the effort is squaring those hips for three, two, and one. Go ahead and release. We're going to take our right hand, we're going to come into Twisted Pigeon. So we could put the right hand just in front of that right knee, if that's where we are. I like to bring my right hand to my left thigh, lengthen through the spine, twist, find my left hand to my le right thigh, my right knee, my right calf. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, look as far back as you can onto that back wall. Soften the face, exhale, release. You might feel really good right here. You might want to adjust that left ankle into a 90 degrees. We're gonna inhale and open up and then exhale, fold forward that chest over the left calf. Bringing the forehead towards the earth. Finding space in your body, letting the face be soft, letting the breath be long, slow, and steady. Hmm. On this next inhalation, long and slow, at the top, open the mouth and let out a nice sigh with the exhale. Ah. Notice if you earn a millimeter in those hips. Three more of your deepest breaths yet. The key to the pose here is staying on top of that right knee so you're not collapsing into your left hip. Exhale completely. On an inhale, you'll begin to walk your hands back towards the body, lifting the heart and chest away from the earth. Tuck the back right toes. Press into your hands, send that left leg back behind you, shake it out, do what you need to feel good to release that pose. I like wide leg down dog, wide leg mountain pose, bend the knees, press into those hips. I like to shake my leg out, do what works for you. And then find your mountain pose. Inhale the right leg first up, then bend the knee, open the hips, 
And look underneath of that right armpit into the ceiling. Hmm. Inhale. As you exhale, swing that right foot through, bringing the right knee to the right wrist, the right ankle towards the left wrist. Walk that left foot back. I want you to come up and first find your, what would this be called, sitting pigeon? Proud pigeon. Proud pigeon, that's the name. Hands are to the side. Inhale, look on up. I'm pressing down on my, the top of my left foot. Looking up. Exhale, release. We'll take the left hand, find it your way, coming into twisted pigeon, either in front of the left knee or on the left thigh. Take the right hand back behind you, grab onto your thigh, the back of your knee, inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist, looking as far back as you can onto that back wall. Staying soft in the face, this is where the practice of surrender and acknowledging, am I efforting too much, can I back off, am I straining? Or can I go a little bit further? The choice is yours. When you're ready, release the pose. Make any adjustments. Our teacher reminds us, perhaps your foot is just happy where it is. <laughs> perhaps you'd like to bring it into 90 degrees. Open up the heart and then exhale, fold forward. Letting the chest and heart Relax into the earth. Inhaling long and slowly. Exhaling long and slowly. Just like the other side, inhale. Exhale, open the mouth and let out a nice sigh. Ah. Notice if your body melts a little bit more. As you're ready, we're gonna bring our hands on an inhale underneath shoulders. Tuck those back toes, bring the body back into mountain pose, and then release that right leg, how it feels good to you. X's and O's, shaking out the leg. Next, we're gonna walk our feet to the middle of the mat. We're gonna walk our hands to the middle of the mat. We're gonna sit down and find our squats position. Perhaps you have it, perhaps you're up off of your heels, that's okay. Find where you are today. We call this the fountain of youth posture. It helps to keep our lower body and our upper body in harmony. So first in prayer position, Take your left hand out to about 10 o'clock, keeping that shoulder in front of the left knee. Inhale, the right arm up towards the sky. Perhaps that's plenty. You might want to take that left arm back around, bend that right elbow, and find a bind back behind that left hip. If you're doing that, then open the heart and look up towards the sky. Smile on the face. Release the hands, come back to center. We'll do the other side. Drop the right hand to about two o'clock, keeping that shoulder in front of the knee. Inhale, the left arm up. Reach towards the heavens. You can stay here, or if you'd like to 
Try the bind. Bend the right elbow in front of the right knee. Bend the left elbow on the back, grabbing onto your right fingertips. Lift the shoulder up, open the heart. And release. From here, we'll come to our crow pose. Many of you may have mastered this, and that's wonderful. For those that are new to this pose, we're going to put our hands out in front of our shoulders into like a push-up pose. I like to lift my hips and begin to imagine that I'm making shelves with my, with my forearms. So I'm going to bring my elbows on the outside of my triceps. And then I'm going to lean forward. And see how I still have my toes on the ground? I'm pressing powerfully through my hands. And then I can begin to lift one toe off the mat and two toes off the mat. And I can play here. If you've mastered this pose and you can go into headstand from here, please do so. Or keep trying this. A is for attempt. Have fun with it. When you're ready, we'll release. And then next, if you have a baggy shirt, you're going to tuck it in. We're going to come into headstand practice. If you're at the beginning of your moon cycle, perhaps you prefer to do legs at the wall um, or even shoulder stand. We're going to practice We're going to practice headstand, and so what I want you to do is interlace your hands, bring your forearms to the earth, and with your knees, kind of as if you're in like Velasana, lift your hips up and support, support the back of the head in, in your palms. You're going to press into your forearms, lift the knees, and begin to just walk those feet, finding what it feels like to balance on your forearms and the top of your head. And then as you play here, you may begin to be able to lift one foot off the mat, two feet off the mat. You want to bring your feet together. Draw those toes towards the ceiling. Try it a few times. If that's totally outside of your practice, or if you're choosing to not do it, you can also do shoulder stand. We're practicing inversions here. We're reversing the blood flow. So shoulder stand, come onto your back, lift your legs up, lift your butt up, and you hold on to your low back. Draw the elbows in close towards one another. And then put your hands, fingers facing towards the toes, and then lift the feet straight up towards the ceiling. Your gaze is in between your big toes up towards the ceiling. So whether you're in a headstand or shoulder stand, you can take your legs wide. You can take them forward and back. What we're doing is we're reversing the blood flow here, and this is really good for our brain and our nervous system. All of our organs, actually. Our heart's getting a bath right now. We spend so much time upright. And with gravity, it just it pulls a lot of energy down towards the bottom of our body. Inversions are really helpful. So wherever you are, we're going to come down with grace. If you're in your headstand, you're going to come out as easily as you can. If you're in a shoulder stand, you're going to first breathe, bend your knees towards your body, hold on to your low back, come down one vertebrae at a time. Extend both legs out in front of you. Let your hands come to your side and let your head and neck sway from side to side and then back to center. 
We're going to come into fish pose next to counterbalance the pressure on the head and neck. So I'd love for you to, while you're laying on your back, bring the, the palms underneath of your, your butt and palms facing down so that your arms are tucked under your body. Lift up. Bend up onto your elbows. Lift up onto the top of your head. Take the bottom set of teeth past the upper set of teeth. The heels are together. The toes are to the side. Your breath is slow. Release the pose. Bring the hands to either side of the body. Rock the head from side to side, back to center. Coming into Setu Bandhasana, the bridge pose. We're going to bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet towards the rear. <laughs> Let's lift the hips and again bring our hands underneath the bum. Lift, lift the hips and if you can, if you have it available, you can interlace your fingertips underneath your spine and you can roll the shoulders underneath. Pressing powerfully into your feet. You can stay here or if you have wheel pose, you'd like to release your hands, bring your palms up over the shoulders, press into your hands, lift the hips and shoulders away. Coming down with ease, one vertebrae at a time. Release the head and neck. Let the head rock from side to side, and back to center. We're going to roll over onto our right side and help our body come upright. We're going to do a final spinal twist. We're going to take our legs as wide as mat distance. We're going to take our right hand and reach it back behind us towards the opposite corner of our mat. Take the left hand to the mat, to our thigh, to our mat. We can come down onto our right forearm. And go ahead and look as far back onto that back wall as you can. Full spinal twist. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, opposite side. So we'll take the left hand to the earth, the right hand down to the earth. And then look as far back and away as you can on the back wall. You should feel good all along the heart. The toes are up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Come back to center. Coming to sit on our on our rear, we're going to come up into Navasana, whether your feet or your legs are straight or you've got a little bit of a bend. The arms are out to the side. Squeeze the belly. Balance. Your gaze is through the big toes.
Go a little bit wider than hips distance. Let the feet fall to the side. The hands or palms facing up about six inches from the waist on either side. Your head and neck soft. I'm going to lead you through a gentle, a brief guided meditation. We're going to go ahead and lift up our left foot about two inches up off the mat. Point and flex and then let it flop to the earth. Lift the right foot up off the mat, two inches, point, flex, flop. On your next inhalation, squeeze the buttocks, squeeze the hips up, squeeze the groin and the low belly, squeeze, 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 and release. As you inhale, take that breath all the way up the rib caves, Cage all the way up the ribs into the clavicle. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <sighs> and let it go. Drop the chin into the chest, keeping the back of the head on the mat. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And release. Lift the left arm up off the mat two inches. Squeeze the fist. Squeeze the hand, make a fist, and release. Inhale the right arm up off the mat two inches. Squeeze the hand, make a fist, and release. Inhale all the way up into the face, squeezing the teeth, squeezing the ears, all the muscles of the face. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then open the mouth and let out your tongue. <sighs> Relax all the muscles of the face. Inhale. Squeeze the forehead, the ears, the head, all of the things. Squeeze every hair on your head and release. Letting everything soften all along your body. Nothing to do but receive. We're taught that after our practice, after all the efforting that we've done on our mat for our asana practice today, that Shavasana now it's where we return, return to goodness, Atma where every cell in our body gets to receive the benefits of our practice. Bringing your awareness to the breath as it enters your nostrils on your upper lip. Without any effort, just witness the breath. And then notice how the belly button has a natural rise and fall as the breath moves in and out of the body. With your awareness, with your eyes closed and your gaze in that space between the eyebrows. I want you to focus there and I want you to count backwards from 15 to 1, witnessing without efforting your breath. 15 navel up, 15 navel down, 14 navel up, 14 navel down. At your pace, all the way to 1 best you can.
draw your awareness into your body as you breathe. Feel the energy reawakening your body. Taking your thumb and touching each fingertip. And as you feel drawn to inhale your arms up overhead. Stretch long into this new moment. Stretching all the way through your fingers and your toes. Eventually, however you get there, we're going to all meet in a sideline position. Honoring all the moments and the efforts it took to come to practice today. And giving thanks to ourself, every cell in our body, loving every part of ourselves. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And when you're ready, take that top hand and press it into the earth. Extend the top leg and help the body come upright. We'll meet again in a comfortable seated position. With our spine tall and our chin tilted, tilted down ever so slightly. Just take a few moments as we breathe in and out of the nostrils to practice a japa japa meditation. This builds our appreciation and gratitude so that we can extend and expand our yoga off the mat. So with each inhalation, you say to yourself in your mind's eye, I am so grateful for my. And then with each exhalation, your object of affection or appreciation. I am so grateful for my eyes, my nose, my ears, my two feet. One, one appreciation per breath. I am so grateful for my friends and family, home. And then let it extend and ripple out. This practice we can take as we're walking to work, taking the bus, finding ourselves frustrated. Returning to a japa japa meditation helps to soothe our mind, calm our spirits, and bring us into the presence. This is how we can take yoga off the mat. What an honor it's been to practice and share with you from our living room, from our loving home, to yours. I bow to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. If you like this, please click that like button, subscribe to our channel. We're doing practice. He and I, we're switching off, we're, we're having fun this summer, we're learning new skills. It's the time to do so. So Mondays and Thursdays, 7 a.m. Hawaii time, that's when we're here live on the mat. But also stay tuned because at Live Yoga Channel, we're going to be sharing all sorts of yogi lifestyle practices that we love to share that keep us harmonized. And we'd like to 